David Miller, a Christian evangelist, in his book, Taste of the Wine, said that one time he reached kind of the end of his rope. And in pure desperation, he just went off to a quiet, secluded place and he prayed, God, what do you want from me? What do you want from me? And the answer he got in his prayers, only your will. And he said, I gave him my will and everything happened. And hence the title, The Taste of New Wine. The intoxicating spirit, the powerful spirit that's released when we just surrender our will to the Lord. See, oftentimes we're always trying to bribe God, I'll do this, I'll do that, and you give me this, if I give you this, if you do this for me, I'll promise I'll give you that. Brothers and sisters, God doesn't need anything. I've prayed, maybe I can win, I bought a lot of tickets. Maybe I, Lord, maybe I can win this $250 million. I'll give it all to you. And you know what he said to me? I already own it all. He owns it all. It's true. It's true. God already has everything. He doesn't need anything. The only thing he doesn't have, brothers and sisters, is your will and my will. Because connected to that is the very heart of love that he is. It's our free will. It's the very heart of love, that free choice. Will we respond or not? So that's the, the ultimate thing. See, Jesus came to do the will of his Father. Everything I say, it's I say it because my Father told me to say it. I do his will perfectly. And we are to do that ourselves. The greatest gift we can give God, the whole purpose of our Lent journey, is learning to basically get control of that will, if you want to use those words, get it under the reins of the power of the Holy Spirit so that our Spirit will guide my will. Because the will is like the rudder of a ship. If God can get the will, He can take us wherever He wants to, what He really wants to do in us. So we need to surrender that. Now, our will, you know, is, is comprised of intellect and free will. Uh, intellect, and, uh, that means, that's our soul, intellect and free will. To know the right and then the power to choose it. That's how critical our soul or the, the will is to the whole spiritual life. To give the Lord our will. Because it'll do so much to influence the soul. You know, we know the right thing. There's hardly a person in the church who doesn't know what the right thing is to do. The power to choose it is the problem. So we've got to pray that the God's grace can touch that will. And literally, as Jesus was lifted up, because he was lifted up, he can lift up our will that can be caught in slavery, imprisoned, oppressed, burdened, weighed down, that we feel like we're just slaves to sin. God's grace miraculously can touch that will and lift us to the most extraordinary thing. We have witnessed it. You know, one of the greatest uh, miracles of God's grace touching the will is what you see in the recovery uh, groups of our society. Things like AA, NA, ethic, and all these groups. These people are locked into a slavery of a sin that they cannot get out of. They're trapped by it. They're oppressed by it. And then they go through the support, and especially the grace of God. You see a miracle of God lifting souls from the utter uh, depths of uh, solitary confinement of sin and taking off and becoming living sins. God can do that to our will. And that's what we got to pray, Lord. There's only one thing you, you don't have. It's my will. I pray for your grace to you touch my will. To lift it up. To free it from all the slavery of sin. To free it to seek only what you desire. I surrender it all to you so that you can then as you were lifted up, you can lift me up to the heights of great, great sanctity. Amen.